So that might be something that is able to help. And also that quash. I just can't wait to see what's going to happen in this winner's finals match. Adam, let's get right into it and see who is going to be moving forward to wait in the grand finals and who is going down to face Enrique Grimaldo in our losers. Let's see what is going to happen here as one suck is going to kick things off with Charizard and Regilecki. And my gosh, Adam, I swear I need to get my eyes checked because I'm seeing double again. It's been a problem throughout a few games in this tournament, but it is such a good lead. Both trainers knowing that the Regilecki threatens the opposing Charizard, and the Charizard just applying good damage to the rest of the team. So a whole lot of, uh, you know, similar mindsets, I think is safe to say, in this game. I do like to see both trainers seeing a strong pairing and using it. Then it comes down to perfect and flawless execution in this one. We do end up in that very tricky situation of how do you manage to get the electro web in and when it comes to speed control one of my you know the most common moves i'm not the finest at learning all of the languages for all of the attacks but i can assure you i know what a dynajet is by now that's the max airstream <laughs> and that could find you the speed advantage you want if you're just exchanging electro webs yeah and something that's really interesting about leonardo's charizard's move set is that it's actually max airstream based on hurricane and Hurricane, well, outside of Dynamax, it's only 70% accurate unless you're taking a look at using it in the rain where it does increase its accuracy. Hurricane is good because it's 140 max base power versus what it usually is based off of, which is Air Slash, which is only 130. We're gonna see One Suck actually match the Gigantamax Charizard here. And this is where I feel like things get a little bit interesting. They are both packing different move sets for these Charizards, but I don't even know if they know that yet. Well, they're going for different moves, that's for sure. One suck throwing up the max guard so far, and an immediate vault switch out from this. Regilecki on one suck side. So they've both played this turn very, very differently. And we'll see if that carves an advantage for one of them. Good damage going down immediately from Leonardo's, uh, onto Leonardo's side. The Incineroar not gonna get the powerful or potent Intimidate that it really wants into these two special attackers, but bringing a potential threat for next turn at least. And now it's time to see how the Regilecki is going to strike back. And it looks like it was going for the Charizard, which did at least get the max guard up. The Incineroar is going to get caught in the switch into that Electro Web, but it was Leonardo going for the max airstream into the Charizard. And that's really what is going to catch him here. That Charizard for Leonardo is so low now, thanks to that Volt Switch coming out from One Sucks Regilecki. And I think One Suck's handling of that opening turn works really well because the Incineroar being in is really important for being able to shut down this Regilecki in this turn, uh, you know, with the threat of the fake out there, just being able to hold it up. And you didn't take any damage or let One Suck get the Dynamax, uh, the Max Airstream, the Dynajet, uh, all the way through on that turn. So that would have been, if Leonardo had hit both his attacks there, would have been in a great position. But that Max Guard, huge value, quite honestly, from uh, one sucks side of the field. Yeah, and especially when you're going to be denying the Electro Web coming in from the Regieleki as well, you're not going to be taking a huge speed deficit here. But here comes the fake out from One Sucks and Cinnaroar. Obviously, that Groudon is taking that place of that Regieleki, but here is a huge Max Airstream. And just like that, the Groudon comes in and the Groudon goes down, not even in range to get that Citrus Berry, just gonna get knocked out just like that. Obviously, Leonardo's Charizard still has a chance to move, so it's going to go for an X Airstream into the Charizard as well, but it is not enough to secure a knockout for Leonardo. This is huge, Adam. That Groudon did uh, not get much value out of its time on the field. It came in, got caught, got knocked out. And I like that turn from One Suck that he looked at turn one and said, yeah, you want to you wanna max Airstream? That's fine. I'll also be able to max Airstream. Did get very, very low. The Regilecki coming back in in a much safer position could force things to be played a little bit safer. Um, I like that he's going for the, you know, the more guaranteed attack rather than relying on the Electro Web there. Uh, but this Incineroar, you know, should be able to take an attack could put Leonardo quite far behind. I don't think the Charizards, either of them, to be honest, are looking particularly safe right now. Uh, they're both very low. They're both getting worn down by the solar power, the life orb recall as well. So they are trying to do as much as they can on this third and final turn of Dynamax and potentially their third and final turn of the game as well. 
Yeah, one tech is in a little bit of an interesting position because obviously you're not faster than this Regieleki that Leonardo was able to freely switch in. So one sucks Charizard is not going to be able to get off another turn of Gigantamax. It will be going down after being taken so low from that solar power recoil and that max airstream. But Leonardo gets to fire off another attack and it will be a knockout onto this Incineroar with another speed boost going the way of that Charizard and Regieleki. So just like that, while one suck was able to take down that Groudon, which was a huge physical threat. He's also now just lost two Pokemon. He's lost two Pokemon, including one of the focal points of his team, and any of those boosts that he got from his own Max Airstreams aren't sticking around. Of course, he does now have his Regieleki to come back in. That's going to be able to easily answer the Charizard over on Leonardo's side, but Leonardo's team, uh, this Charizard has been boosting up its speed, has been trying to get a little bit out of hand, and the, uh, you know, the Charizard, or the Regieleki on Leonardo's side is also rocking a speed boost from Max Airstream as well. So that Regieleki could immediately try and deal with things. Uh, just throw down a potential Electro Web, checking the speed boost right there. Maybe saying, you know what, I know I'm going to be the faster Regieleki. I guarantee win this mirror um, because of the speed boost going down earlier. Now I've got that going for me. I'm in a really good position to try and like wrap up this game as quickly as possible. Uh, you do have to see if you can land an attack on the Zacian before you get caught by the uh, the opposing Regieleki if you're Leonardo. And you've got to worry about your solar power getting worked through as well. That is going to start racking up the damage and get enough to get a knockout. Yeah, we're coming down to probably the final moments of this game number one as we are going to see a Protect come through from one Saxashian. Is making sure that it's going to be able to stick around on the field as it waits out some of this damage from Leonardo. Here comes the Electro Web, though. Will be able to land onto One Sucks Reggie Lucky, so will drop its speed. We'll see if that's enough with those max airstream boosts. It looks like it is going to be as Charizard is able to get the move on. Oh! And it misses! It misses the heat wave over onto that. Charizard trying to get both Pokemon oh. with really good damage, but the Regieleki avoiding that attack. Absolutely crucial for One Suck to stay in this game. And of course, level up the Pokemon count. It does manage to land an Electro Web in response. That is going to be important here. And the Venusaur coming in is going to struggle a little bit, I think, to really get a foothold in this game. Of course, it does have Chlorophyll for two more turns. That was intense sunlight for two turns we saw just there on Leonardo's screen, making sure that the speed is in control. But can this Zacian just run through the rest of this game? I mean, it's, it's probably feeling pretty good about its chances here. I mean, that's something that you've got to be a little bit worried about if you are one suck, because if you saw on that move selection for that Venusaur, there is an Earth power in that Venusaur's move set. So that is something that does threaten Pokemon on one sex side, especially if you can get that minus one special defense drop that does have a 10% chance, but it looks like it's going to be the Weather Ball to go first, and that is going to do a lot of damage to that Zacian, and Regieleki is still going to be able to move, and it looks like it's going to finish it yep. off. That Zacian going to go straight down before it can move. Really smart targeting from Leonardo. I was saying, can the Zacian run through the rest of the game and do what it needs to do? No, it can't. It gets caught by two attacks. The Regieleki using its speed to go first, or just after the Venusaur, which had the chlorophyll set up. Really neatly done, and Leonardo is going to be able to wrap this one up. He identified the threat correctly, played around it, had access to the Weather Ball, which of course can do great damage in the sun to that Zacian. And then, yeah, this Regieleki can't do anything to try and get through this turn. I mean, it's going to be able to protect, see out the rest of the sunlight, but there's no way you're going to be able to do enough damage with your spread move in Electro Web to wrap this one up. So Leonardo taking another step closer. There goes the sun, there goes the chlorophyll, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. Now, you can see that the Earth Power is going to be the move of choice for Leonardo's Venusaur, but I don't know if that you actually are going to need it, especially because here comes a Thunderbolt. It's going to take that Regieleki so low. And let's see how the speed works. It looks like Regieleki is going to be able to fire back. Here comes a Thunderbolt of its own, but Regieleki still hangs on. And more importantly, Venusaur can go for the Earth Power. It does hit, and that means Leonardo is taking this game number one in this winner's finals. 
Nicely done by Leonardo, you know, really, really smart throughout all of those turns. Uh, used his Charizard very, very well, and those speed boosts are actually quite important. Yes, turn one wasn't as impactful as he would have liked, but he kept on trucking with that Charizard, kept throwing down those max airstreams, and kept himself in a really good position, being able to win the speed with his Venusaur, being able to win the speed advantage with his uh, Regieleki as well, was just really, really important. So I think he knew what was going to happen in turn one, was okay with giving up more damage, but then turns two and three of the Dynamax were just a lot more impactful. Even though he lost the Groudon very, very quickly, which was definitely a little bit scary for him, he bounced back from it and he knew his team was able to see that one out. Yeah, it was just some really, really smart targeting on Leonardo's side to be able to make sure that that wasn't a critical mistake. Especially when you know that when you bring in the Groudon, not only are you setting up the sun for yourself, you're also setting up the sun for your opponent, so that is something that you do have to bear in mind. But it is about time we get into this game number two in this best of three winners finals. Let's see if Wensa can make a comeback and tie this up, or if Leonardo is going forward to our grand finals to patiently await who will meet him there. For one sec, it is going to be the Charizard and the Incineroar, and Leonardo is going to be leading off this game number two with Charizard and Regieleki. We're not seeing double this time, Adam. No, it did win the game, though, for Leonardo last time, <laughs> so P's kind of the one that gets the ability. He's that, got that game lead. He's able to stick with it for a turn and, and just accept, you know, I can play through this again. But the double Charizard uh, coming through, making sure that, you know, they, they've got one of their most potent attackers on the field. They can start playing around with the Dynajet Max S stream, uh, you know, just being able to, to push that one through. So really, really powerful um, if they can can land those boosts. Of course, the, the Charizard on, on one suck's side has to look again at that Regieleki and, and think, do I want to go for it or do I have to protect myself again? The it, bring of the Incineroar here, though, mixes that up. You know, you can't Dynamax both. You can't avoid Fake Out on them both. And I think that helps him out a lot. I do like the adaptation, actually, from one suck. Yeah, it really does put Leonardo into this position of what, you know, can I really do in this position? And in fact, Leonardo just says, hey, I'm not going to fall victim to that. I'm going to take my Regieleki out, bring in the Groudon, set up the solar power once again, and it might work out again this time. Let's see what happens as we are going to see that Gigantamax come through just to allow that Charizard to get those speed boosts set up. Maybe Groudon can take advantage of those this time around, as we did see it was the max airstream that was selected in that move preview before this turn. But how does Wensuck answer this? I think that's going to be the big question, and it looks like it's going to be with a Gigantamax of his own. Let's go ahead and see those dueling Charizards on the field, Adam. I'm really excited to see how this one turns out. The, I mean, the, the fact that the Regieleki threat was kind of already handled um, definitely makes this turn a little more, you know, one stock can play a little more fast and loose with it, if you will. He can definitely start throwing out his max airstreams. He can feel a little bit better about that. And he may just be able to pick up an immediate knockout on this Groudon again. We'll see if he goes for it. I'll be curious to see what follows up in this one. Oh, uh, it's going to be the max rock fall into the opposing Charizard. My goodness, uh, that is a huge turn for one suck. I do not think that can be overstated. I think that's also something that as Leonardo, you are not expecting. Charizard is not known for running some type of powerful rock type attack, but in this case, it's ancient power. That is where that max rock fall is coming from on one suck side. So now Leonardo is out of Gigantamax, is out of some pretty powerful offensive options and really has to rely on the Groudon and the Regieleki to really get things done here all while knowing that that Charizard is posing a pretty big threat on one suck side. Uh, yeah, that Charizard is going to be really hard to take down too because it is Gigantamax, does have a huge amount of health, and yes, a Regieleki can hit it real hard, but I don't know if it can quite hit it hard enough to get all the way through that pretty much full bar of health that is sitting up there. So a big ask on this Regieleki right now, and while the Regieleki is trying to do that, if it misses, it can just get caught by any attack, really, from the Charizard on this side. And Cinero did its job in turn number one, forced that Regieleki out, and we get to see the Regieleki like he has come along once again from one suck side of the field yeah mag big max guard here coming out for one suck and that's just going to make sure that none of this damage is really going to hit because yeah it's gonna be a whiff and a miss from leonardo 
will be able to hit that Regia Lucky that switched in. Um, but yeah, that's that's still not really what Leonardo was looking for. Leonardo was really looking to try to tie up this game in terms of the amount of damage onto one sex Pokemon. Oh, definitely. And I think this Regieleki coming in, you know, then there's going to be that Regieleki kind of coin flip, right? That says, well, if I land my Electro Web and slow you down, that, that could be impactful. You know, the Groudon is a tough thing to bring the Regieleki into, but it doesn't matter about the Groudon. I think Wonsuck knows that he can actually knock out the Groudon pretty easily with his Charizard. He's done it before in game number one. So the Groudon still, while it may want to throw out those Rock Slides or even a Precipice Blades to deal with the Regieleki, just has to be careful and, and honestly has to be respectful of what the Charizard can do on its final turn of Dynamax. And Leonardo just really taking the time to make each of these careful decisions because he is playing in the back seat right now. We are going to see that Protect come through for the Groudon, just kind of expecting that the Charizard's going to be able to knock it out pretty quickly here. But here comes a huge Volt Switch coming out from One Sucks Regieleki. It will go back into its Pokeball and we'll see what decides to come out in its place. I, I feel like that, you know, the Incineroar makes a really good decision here just to make sure that you can get that Intimidate down, but it's going to be that Venusaur coming in as the fourth and final Pokemon. Yeah, no Groudon actually from one suck side of the field, relying on the sun from Leonardo to bring his Groudon, and now there's no sun. I mean, this is going to be a bit tricky for the Venusaur, but can still put down some damage. Here we go. Oh, Regieleki, you're not going to be sticking around. Oh, that was such a good call from One Suck, though, just to recognize that Groudon might protect in a situation, and then I'm able to get that big damage onto the Regieleki, secure that knockout, and force Leonardo into this position where the Groudon is taking chip from the G-Max Wildfire, and Leonardo is down to their fourth and final Pokemon. That That's all he's going to have for this game. Yeah. And, and that might not be enough. Uh, particularly when it's the Venusaur and there's no sun coming into play on this turn as well. I mean, there's no chlorophyll. Both these Venusaur kind of just, you know, chilling out a little bit, um, you know, trying to do their best, I'd imagine. Um, you know, I do like this cho choice from Leonardo. We saw him lock it in there. The weather ball, of course, uh, going to be changing types to match the weather. And the, uh, the early rock fall from Charizard making it a little interesting, maybe making it a little bit vulnerable, but it's still four Pokemon to two in one sucks advantage. And I think if you give up the Charizard now, you're probably pretty okay with it. Um, you're probably not feeling too bad. He doesn't want to give it up. He's going to hold onto it for a little bit longer. Um, the Incineroar's not going to appreciate that weather ball either, though. No, it's not, but at this point, I think OneSec is doing a great job of maintaining the advantage by limiting the amount of damage that this particular Groudon is going to be able to do. Leonardo does show off that weather ball. Here comes the attack, and Incineroar actually takes that pretty comfortably despite it being super effective. Groudon, though, going for the Precipice Blades, it will connect onto both Pokemon, and wow, we did see that attack drop from the Intimidate, that Incineroar is still going to go down. One sec though, firing back with a Frenzy Plant, knocking out Leonardo's Groudon. So I feel like that was a good switch. Yep. That was a really good trade. Totally fair switch. Keep your Charizard safe for a turn. That's absolutely fine. You don't need to be too worried about that. You can buy some time. Let the Venusaur get worn down. You knew your Venusaur wasn't really in too much threat from the opposing Venusaur, or of course that Groudon Precipice Blade's not enough to get a knockout without any boosts or any shenanigans going on. Now you just save your Charizard to late as well. You know, you know there's not going to be the ability for Chlorophyll to go up. Maybe save your Charizard a little bit until there's no sand either, so the Weather Ball doesn't cause any problems and then once that's clear you can just bring in the Charizard and throw down whatever attack you really want on this Venusaur um, as long as it hits you're in a good position from that point forward so Leonardo looking for an out here um, I don't think there's one on the board right now uh, there may be a knockout but I do I think there's an out for the whole game probably not no, I, but you, you gotta try, right? You've gotta play it to all of your outs right now. We are going to see the Electro Web come through, which is going to drop the speed of this Venusaur. And that's just gonna put One Suck in a more commanding position as we are going to see the Weather Ball come out again from this Venusaur, just trying to hope to potentially knock out this Regieleki. It does get the knockout here. So we are starting to even up the score just a little bit. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the Venusaur wasn't able to move on one such side of the field, but most importantly, just giving up that Regieleki, throwing it in for the turn to do very little, in this case, just throw down the Electro Web, you know, just means that now the Charizard comes in, Weather Ball being that rock type isn't a problem for it. Of course, there's no Sun, which does mean there's no solar power, but it also means there's no chlorophyll. So now we're just back to a very neutral board. The Venusaur is slower than the Venusaur over on one suck side because of that Electro Web. I think this Charizard should just be able to tidy it up in this final turn. Yeah, really great positioning coming out from one suck here, just to make sure that at the end, it was still going to be his game. And with that blast burn and the final knockout, one suck is going to tie up this series versus Leonardo. And we are one to one in our best of three winners finals right now. It's coming down to the wire, Adam. Yeah, it's so close. I mean, neither trainer's going home at the end of this game. They're both going to be, uh, you know, sticking around for at least one more game each, but tying it up very nicely turns just going very quickly in one suck's favor from kind of the very first turn got that you know got exactly what he needed going on and just kept rolling from there the reveal of the max rockfall through that ancient power maybe an advantage of the closed team sheet format but you know when you're down a game and you're in the winners finals that's the time to throw out the mix up and i really really like that he pulled that out the sand caused some interesting conundrums for the rest of the game but overall i felt one suck was always in charge and at the end yeah he threw up the incineral he threw up the regieleki the score line doesn't quite show in the two to one there just how commanding that was yeah for sure i mean once i kind of had to do that in order to get into the right position to just secure the end game. So I really like the way that he pivoted around Pokemon. And I think Leonardo also has a lot of information to take forward into this game number three. Let's see who is going to be moving forward to our grand finals of the global exhibition and who will be going down to the losers finals to get a second chance to take the championship title. Leonardo and one sec tied at one apiece going into this third game. And we've got the Charizard and the Incineroar for one sec and the Charizard and the Regieleki for Leonardo. This is this is kind of a, a little bit of a, a bait and switch, I feel like coming out from game number two. Yeah, both trainers going with uh, what won them their game, even though it was the same lead for Leonardo's last game that actually cost him a little bit. Uh, have to see if the same play comes through. Of course, it does cause a, a mental mind game uh, to see, you know, oh, well, is the Groudon going to come in? Should I just go after the Groudon again? Um, you know, you've really got to think about that if you are on the side of uh, Leonardo. I think he's made a big mix up here which could cause some massive problems. I really want to see how this turns out um, because I think this turn could shock one suck a little bit. Not what you may expect out of this team as there goes the Dynamax. But is it what one suck is expecting? That is going to be the big question that we're going to have answered here. And I love this change up from Leonardo because I think this Reggie Alecki Dynamax is just what the global exhibition ordered, especially when one sucks Charizard gave Leonardo so much trouble. Yeah, the you know, one sucks gonna match that too. Yeah, he's got to match it with a uh, you know Dynamax or in this case Gigantamax of his own. But the Charizard, you know, really the focal point of One Suck's team. That's what won him the game last time around. You know, pushing through with those Max Rock Falls. Here's the thing: if your only answer to deal with that Regieleki on this turn is Fake Out, that's not going to play so nicely into it. It is the Fake Out oh. into the Regieleki. That's exactly what Leonardo wanted. Leonardo, after that, is going to be able to fire back with a massive Max Lightning. That's that's just a one-hit knockout onto the Gigantamax Charizard. So one sec just, just loses all of that momentum so quickly. The momentum doesn't even get started. What a physics lesson's coming out from here from Leonardo. One suck showed his strategy with that lead in the very first turn. He showed oh. it and then he changed it up. The hurricane hits as well for big damage down on the Incineroar, enough to activate its berry. But Leonardo takes that knowledge from game number two. Says, yeah, you are gonna try fake out the Regieleki or fake out whatever comes in. That's fine. You're gonna have a Dynamax to try and fake out. And guess what? It doesn't work. Then he lands the immediate knockout. No value out of that Charizard over on one suck side of the field. And this Regieleki should just be able to start running away with the game. I'll be very, very shocked if there is an easy response from one suck. He brings his own Regieleki and his own Regieleki isn't gonna be able to easily fell the Dynamax Regieleki over on Leonardo's side. No, especially when electric terrain is up and running for this Regieleki. 
I think that's what's going to be really, really tough to deal with, especially because we know that Leonardo's Regiolecki is holding on to that magnet. So that's just an increased amount of power coming out from that specific Pokemon. We are going to see that Regiolecki take a little bit of damage here, but Leonardo is ready to fire back here. Another powerful Max Lightning. It is into the Venusaur, so it's not super effective, but Charizard can still take its turn. And there is that Heat Wave. It does connect onto both Pokemon, bringing them super super low yeah i mean it's getting both pokemon dangerously low that is a lot of damage going down on that turn both these pokemon eligible to get knocked out by anything coming out of the regieleki you can't even protect around it it's just going to be able to do that damage so really leonardo in charge of this game able to choose exactly what he knocks out when he knocks it out and no ground on you know available for one second no ground type means this dynamax regieleki might just run away with it it's something that people you know like the ground on for it handles the regieleki it's why something like the landorus has been so popular in previous forms one suck does not have that option right now doesn't have a way to try and slow it down and these max lightnings just keep on rolling yeah the other thing about that too even if one suck wanted to try to use that venusaur to maybe put something to sleep there's electric terrain so you can't so that is something else that one suck doesn't have at his disposal right now and yes he's going to be able to secure a knockout onto leonardo's charizard but leonardo still has two more healthy pokemon in the back in that groudon and that venusaur meanwhile one suck is down to their final two pokemon that regieleki that is sitting at super low health and that incineroar Yep, and this is nicely done by Leonardo, just playing out the end game, kind of by the book, step by step. You don't want to throw out your Groudon right now, because it would just get intimidated. And you know what? You don't need to throw it out. It's going to be able to come in at any point and take knockouts on both of these opposing Pokemon. So really just saving it as a backup plan, a just-in-case. It's the most effective backup plan I think I've ever seen. And now, you know what? This Regieleki is in such a good position. This Venusaur doesn't feel too threatened either. I imagine it's feeling pretty good about itself. You know, yeah, it could get faked out, but then it's probably not going to get knocked out by a follow-up from that side. So really, all of the choices here. Leonardo just knows he's got electric to He's got his Regieleki in a fine position and, and can just run away with it in this turn. Like I say, if anything does get knocked out, guess what? It's going to be a full attack stat, not fake outable. Groudon coming in against an electric type, which can barely really hit it. And an Incineroar, which it does huge damage to as well. So mm -hmm. Leonardo able to play very kind of off the cuff on this turn to see what it can land. It wins the speed tie against the opposing Regieleki and does massive damage to the Incineroar. Yeah, Electroweb going to come through just to try to deal with some of that speed, dropping the Regieleki and Venusaur's speed step by one. But Venusaur should be able to follow up here with an Earth Power. It is going to connect onto the Incineroar, knocking it out. And now Wonsuck just has the Regieleki left, and the odds are not looking good right now, Adam, especially because Regieleki was not able to secure a knockout, and has that Venusaur with that Earth Power as a huge threat against it. The Venusaur can take the knockout. You know, if the Regieleki on one side decides to go for it, then it would.